Oh, hello, sweet friends, and welcome to Stellar J Studios. I am Gina, and I am thrilled that you are here today. So remember in my last video, I showed you how I made my little pre-stitched fabric scraps so that whenever I am journaling, I can easily grab something that's already been stitched and stick it in my journal, and it looks like I actually took the time to run it through a sewing machine. These little snippets are not ones that I run through the machine. These are ones that have already been stitched or sewn by someone else. So if you are a person that goes to thrift stores or estate sales, you'll almost always run across abandoned projects. One of my favorite abandoned projects are quilt tops. I love how someone took the time, especially with this one, to hand stitch all of these blocks together, these little fabric scraps, but yet they couldn't quite complete the project. And so when I see things like this, it makes me just giddy because I wanna help them finish that story rather than it just sitting on the shelves in some dark little dingy store waiting for a new home. I'm gonna bring it home, I wash them, I press them, and then I like to uh, see how I can fit them into my stories. So for this quilt block, I'm going to do a couple of different things. So I'll show you how I like to use them. I'm gonna take this one first. So, this one, I can see all this hand stitching on the back. Now, I love using the back sides of fabric because to me that's where all the magic happened is seeing all the process and the work that went into putting this um, quilt together. So I like to use um, just my hands and kind of tear it apart. Now, if you have an old quilt, um, it's probably going to take a little time and patience. This quilt, the fabric does not seem to be uh, too degraded, so it's really easy to pull these apart. Now, I know some of you guys are like, well, why would you tear apart this? Because I'm giving it another story. It was sitting and waiting for someone to come and turn it into something beautiful. And that is what I'm going to do. So once I have these torn apart, I can now use these little parts in some artwork. And so I love this right here. So you can see there's one, two, three, four pieces. So I could just take and clip it with my scissors and now I have two of these and then I could even pull the stitches apart right here and when I use them I actually put these in so that the stitches will show so let me use this is a little booklet that I made just out of a piece of ledger paper I have a video on how we made the little booklets um, I will link it below but this booklet just I don't have any paint or anything on this yet it's just kind of blank and it's got all the markings from whoever had this before. So I'm going to start telling a bit of a story and I'm going to just go with the fabric and see if I can get some pieces off of it. There we go. So I just use an all-purpose Elmer's all-purpose glue stick. I like how it sticks and I also like that they're really small. My only drawback is that they have a plastic um, container and I really wish they didn't, but that's another video. I'm just gonna glue these down and so now I can see this story. I can see these stitches and I can see and start to imagine the, the work that went into putting these stitch or these little fabric pieces together. I'm going to then take my little pieces. I think I'll do this one with the right side facing out. And let's take one more. And I think we'll just chop it up. I don't necessarily need 
um, perfect shapes. I like the odd shapes because what that does is when I come back to this journal or if I'm working on a piece of art, I look at the stuff that I've already put in and I see, okay, where where is there a story to tell? Okay, so there's one way. So another way is to take and just take your scissors and just start cutting. And I know some of you are freaking out, but this is what this is what I do. This is my upcycling, my reusing, my finding new life and new stories in old forgotten materials. And believe it or not, a lot of things that we love like quilt blocks and discarded books and projects that never got finished, they go to the landfill and they end up in the trash. And that's not, ooh, now that's gonna be an interesting piece. That's not what this person who created this, that's not what they intended. So I'm going to assume that they want their story told and I am going to give it new life. Now, obviously, if you don't want to do that, then you're probably watching the wrong channel because <laughs> my, my stuff is always upcycled. Okay, so now I have just some cut pieces and I cut around whatever shapes I wanted and I didn't pay any attention to what was on the back side. So it kind of gives me some randomness and it kind of gives me um, a little bit of surprise to see, oh, I can tear that too. A little bit of surprise to see, oh, okay, what, when I go through these little fabrics, I'm gonna be like, oh, what could I do with that piece? Look, that's interesting. You could also tear it. And again, if you are working with a really old abandoned project or really old quilt, you may not be able to tear or cut through it as much. I um, save those quilt blocks and abandoned fabric projects for other purposes. I don't necessarily use those because they're just too delicate. So um, I'm going to use this one because it looks like it's fairly new. I would say it was made, oh, I don't know, sometime in the last 30 years maybe. And it was a really big quilt block. I mean, I'm sorry, it was a really big um, quilt, but it just wasn't finished. And unfortunately, the uh, fabrics that whoever made this used, they didn't like put, put it with the quilt. So a lot of times, I'm gonna pull this off because I think that's gonna be a cool little piece. A lot of times you'll see these quilts and they'll have the um the they'll like the squares and the fabric and stuff already cut and they'll have a little bag that goes along with it but that wasn't the case with this one but that's okay because the quilt was super super cute and i love these colors okay the last way that i like to pull apart these quilt blocks is to take my rotary cutter and just have at it. Now, if you don't have a rotary cutter, cutter, that's okay. You can, again, use your scissors. But for those of you that have a rotary cutter, you know that these kind of, and by the way, be very careful. Um, these are kind of fun because you get your little aggressions out. You can also use... Um, your rotary cutter like you're supposed to where you have uh, some sort of a shape and you cut around it. I am not doing that. I am just going to cut however I want and it goes really fast. So I'm just going to cut some random things here. Ooh, that's kind of cool. And then we'll see how, whew, look at all that. We'll see how it can find a new home in my little booklet that I made. All right, we're gonna see about cutting this down a little bit. So this rotary cutter 
was in my grandma's stash of sewing goodies when she passed. And, whew, kind of made a mess. And so, I love it. I have other ones, and they're newer, but this one, this one's my go-to. All right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, I love, love, love that, that corner. And I love the hand stitching, so I think what we'll do is let's just put this, ooh, let's wrap it around. How about that? Oh, look at that. So I use that rotary cutter all the time. Oh, which means we're gonna move this. That's okay, because remember, we're using a glue stick, so we can do whatever we want. We can move things. Yeah, okay, that's super cute. Love that. Um, Let's take, ooh, ooh, that's a cute little piece too. And that kind of would go there. So I love using my grandma's old sewing things, her measuring tape, her buttons and pins and needles. Um, I was telling my husband the other day, I said, you know why grandma quit, quit sewing? Because I remember when she quit sewing and I was so sad because I knew my grandma loved sewing. And so when she quit, I was like, grandma, you know, why, why don't you sew anymore? And she said it was because her eyes had gotten too, too bad and it was hard for her to see um, what she was stitching. And that always kind of broke my heart because I know my grandma loved when she was sewing and when she was making her quilts and things like that. All right, well, it's not um, Gina if, if there's not a house involved. So, yep, there you go. Got me a house. Probably need to put another house up somewhere. So anytime I'm sewing, I'm always thinking about my grandma and about what she would be thinking about the things I'm creating and how, how she, and I know she would love them and how, she, how she'd probably get excited and join in the fun. Okay, let's put one more on here. How do I wanna do this one? Ooh, we could do that. Ooh, let's do this. Let's pull it apart. Let's do this side. Okay, and then we'll do, cause that, Right there, that could be a little house. I like that. All right. So now, I've got a really good start on my little booklet here. Ooh, I think I'm gonna go this way. That's another thing, when I'm gluing all these things down, I can figure out which way is up and which way is down. So that could be a house, that could be a house. So I'm gonna have to do some thinking. But there's stories already here waiting to be told. And it all came from scraps of fabric. So once I'm done, I just take all my scraps. I stick them in my scrap jar, mix them around a little bit. And now I have a bunch of fabric snippets that are ready to be put into my art. All right, my friends, thanks for joining me. I hope you are healthy. I hope you're happy. I hope you do something creative today. Until next time, bye-bye.